Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to design a sign-up screen all in Adobe XD. So I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe XD and you can see I've created a new artboard for the iPad Pro, 10.5 inch. You can do this with any artboard you like. But if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, you can find the assets, so that's this logo over here, as well as the final design, all linked in the description if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing to do is, as I say, create your own artboard. You can select the artboard and adjust the orientation here. I'm, of course, using a landscape orientation. Or you can grab the artboard tool and just create any new artboard using the presets on the right. So once you've got your artboard, the first thing to do is just grab this type tool, left click anywhere, and we're going to type some text. So my text is going to be for a title, and I'm going to type sign up friend. And we'll just scale this up nice and quickly, give this a slightly darker color. And I'm using the font Lato, and I'm going to set the font size to 40 and the style to black. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is actually add a placeholder for where an image is going to go. This is a sign-up screen. There's not going to be too much in the way of information on here, so I want to add an image just to make it a bit more visual, a bit more appealing to look at. So we'll grab that rectangle tool and just create a four-sided shape over here and just stretch this so that it fills this right side. In fact, I'm going to type a width of 400 and press return and then just use the alignment tools at the top to snap that to the right edge. And just go and deselect the border and just give this a gray fill for now. We're going to add an image to this later in the tutorial, but that's just going to serve as our placeholder. So next what I'm going to do is select the text here and hold Alt and Shift on the keyboard. Shift drags it straight down and holding Alt creates a copy. And I can double click this and I'm going to type the text name so this is going to be for our two sign-up fields, name and email. And I'm going to set the size for this at 14. I think I'm going to leave the style as black still. And because we're going to have two fields with the same stylistic formatting, we're actually going to do one first, get that right, and then just duplicate it using the repeat grid tool. So let's just grab that rectangle tool and create a rectangle. And I want this to be 60 pixels high. Let's round that down to 400. And I'm going to deselect the fill and just select the border and give this a nice light gray from the color picker. So you can see the reference for this color is E3, E3, E3. And then with that shape selected, I can change the radius so that's the curvature of the corners. So I could type in four and you can see I get a nice slightly rounded edge around all four corners. Or I could type in something extreme like a hundred and it rounds it off completely. So it depends what style you're going for. I'm gonna stick with four just so we have a nice soft rounded edge. Just make sure this text is positioned vertically central. So we have some equal space above and below and we have a nice little bit of space here on the left so it's not kind of too tight to that left edge and we can just snap that to the left as well and I'm going to select the name text here and just make this much lighter now you can see here we have a very light gray I'm actually going to hover around the blue area on the hue slider and then just bring the color picker ever so slightly in now the reason I'm doing this is because you have a very kind of desaturated gray here and I just want to give this an ever so slight hint of blue so it isn't completely gray and it does have a hint of color so you can see the title text at the top here if I select the color here you can see we're using this hex value 777777 everything along this left edge is completely desaturated and devoid of color but what I'm going to do is enter a reference to a specific color that I've prepared in advance and that is 687984, press return, and you can see again. So we have a nice dark gray, but we also have a hint of color blue coming in here as well. So I could go and adjust the hue and just move this around a little bit. So that's how it looks completely desaturated. 
and with a nice hint of blue, just adds a little bit more, ooh, I don't even know what, but a little bit more color into that text. So we've got our title, we've got our first text field, now we're going to create a second text field. And rather than create it by just duplicating, which is we're totally fine, what we're going to do is create this a slightly smarter way. So if we just drag over our text and our box, select the repeat grid option, and we can now drag this down and we can do this as many times as we like. So if you have a very, very long form, I suggest using this technique. We've only got two boxes though, so we're just going to drag that to the bottom, hover over this pink area in between, and you can adjust the spacing or the gutter between the different text boxes. And I'll set that to about 15. And then just click anywhere to come out of that repeat grid group. And you can go back in by double clicking and then you can go and edit specific elements. So if I go and change the text color, for example, you can see it updates across every instance. If I want to go and update the border color, again, you can see it changes across every single input field. So that's a really good way of saving time, but it only applies to any stylistic related formatting. So if I double click to go inside and double click again, I can actually change the text. And because it's not style related, it allows me to have this as an individual text field. So incredibly useful. And if you want to just uh, get rid of that, you can just ungroup the grid and it relieves you with everything that you created it just isn't part of that repeat grid group function anymore. So we'll leave that as a repeat grid group for now. And I'm also just going to hold Alt and Shift again and drag down. So I'm copying that title and we'll set the size to, let's go for 12, and the style to regular. And what I'm going to do is type some smaller text here. I accept the out outrageous privacy policy. And of course, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool now to sample that same color as the text. You can use the six digit reference color if you like, or just the eyedropper tool. It's sometimes a bit quicker. And it's quite light, this text here, even though they are the same color, this text is bigger and it is bolder. So this text here, even though it's the same color, it is a bit harder to read. So I'm just going to bring this down ever so slightly manually on the color picker, just so it's a little bit darker and stands out a bit more. And we're also going to add a checkbox alongside this. So let's grab that rectangle tool, click and hold shift, and just deselect the fill. And we're going to give this the same four pixel corner radius. And for the border, I'm going to again use the eyedropper tool and sample the same color that I did for the other border. And we'll just go and line that up. Make sure we're all good there. Now, I kind of want to introduce this same hint of a blue color as I've done with the text onto the boxes. However, I've already created all of the boxes with this just default lighter gray. Now, what I could do is go and change all of these manually, or I could just select one instance of this and go down here to the asset panel and I can actually add this as a color. And you can see it adds this gray color here. Now, because all of these boxes that I've created so far are using the same color for the border, I can actually right click this and go to edit. And if I change it, it will change every instance of that. So I could still keep this nice and light, but I can just hover around the blue area on the hue slider and just bring that out. So you can see I'm just bringing in a little bit of blue even though I'm keeping them light and I'm doing that really quickly. So if you've got lots more fields and forms and buttons and things than me and you've done them all with the same gray, that's a really quick way to change them all. Okay. Next what I'm going to do is double click to go inside the repeat grid group, select one of the boxes, hold shift and select the text, go to edit, copy, click anywhere to come out of that repeat grid group and then go to edit and paste. And just hold shift and drag this straight down. And this is going to be our call to action button. So let's select this and just uncheck the border. Check the fill and from the color picker, where well, you can see I've got a blue already here. 
you can pick a color of your choice. This particular blue is 37A7FA, if you'd like to follow along. And at the moment it is on top of the text, so I can't see anything underneath it. So let's go to Object, Arrange, Center Back. Now I can see the name, I can select this and make this white. So we've got a nice bit of contrast there between the text and the button. I'm going to select Central Alignment for the text as well and just bump up the size to 16 and we'll leave all the other font properties the same. Now what I can do is with the text selected, hold shift and select the button itself. And from the alignment options at the top of the property inspector, I can align this vertically and horizontally in the center. And because I centrally aligned the text as well from the text panel, I could type a call to action. So let's say get started and it will all emanate out from the center. So I don't have to go and reposition the text or anything. So what I'm going to do now is just maybe give this a bit more spacing. And it's always worth paying attention to little details as well. So the space here and here. So let's just create a rectangle. Give this a red. We'll use this as like a, a, a guide. So we'll note that spacing there. I'm going to round that up to 30 pixels on the height and then just use this 30 pixel red guide just to line everything up. So there we go, the space either side of that button is equal. That's fantastic. Go up here, the spacing, the height of this is 15, so half of 30. And then up here, I could bring this down. So that's a really uh, DIY way of working, but it's just something I like to do to space things out. And sometimes things don't look correct when you follow that. Like for this example uh, here, I might move this up a bit more just because I want this title to have a bit more space. I might just bring it up a pinch. We'll go for, let's go for 44 on the size. And I'm actually going to centrally align this text as well. And again, just hold shift and select the button underneath and align that centrally. So you don't have to kind of line everything up to the pixel with that level of precision, but paying attention to those smaller details across a large project will definitely pay off, whether it's the larger details or the smaller details, they're all super, super important. So something else that I've just noticed is we need to add the logo. So hopefully you've got your own logo, you can download this logo, or you can just grab the type tool, type some text, pick a font, pick a color, and boom, you've got a logo or you can just use this one and we'll drag this here into the center. And I'm just going to create another dummy rectangle just so I've got something to align this to. And I can just select both of those objects and align that to the center and then just delete that rectangle. And we could just move this into the center as well. Now I know that the logo is centrally aligned so I can actually group this whole section here together by going to object and group. Or if you're on the PC, just right clicking and using that contextual menu to group and ungroup your objects. Select this logo. Ah, and you can see it's aligned the logo to the larger group, but that is fine. That's totally fine. We'll just create another rectangle and align them all to that, just so it sits centrally in that space. Now you can do it by eye, but if you're like me, you need to know that it's perfect. You need to know it's all lined up. So we're getting there now. I'm just gonna give this a bit of space here. I think the logo, I'm going to eyedrop a tool that same color. Or what you can do is from the color picker, you can just select a color and add it as a swatch here. So you can see I've added that blue and it just means that I can really quickly and easily reuse it from the color picker. And something that I've just noticed is we haven't actually added a checkbox. Now I'm going to do this for this tutorial. So let's select the pen tool and just left click anywhere, hold shift. Holding shift keeps that line snapped at a 45 degree angle. Click again, still holding shift, click again. And it wants to continue this line. Let's press escape and it will cut that short. And we'll just position this in the center of the box. Bump up the size to two and press return. And in the latest version of XD, we now have some more stroke enhancements so we can round that cap off and we can also round off the corner as well or the join. And we can scale this holding shift up or down. So let's just get that in the middle just so it feels balanced on the left and the right sides. 
And then from the border color picker, I'm again going to use my blue that I've kind of saved there. Brand consistency and all that stuff. So I'm just going to select this group now and go to object ungroup. So everything is ungrouped. Maybe nudge this down. And now everything's starting to shape up. Just spend a little bit more time refining all those details, adjusting things like spacing, colors, just changing everything to the point where you're happy. So I might double click to go inside the repeat grid group, for example, just select the name and just make that fill color a bit lighter. You can see it affects them both. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually go back to this rectangle we created at the beginning and just switch over to my finder and just drag an image in. So you can drag this in from a folder from your desktop, just drag it onto the shape and it will add this in. And in the latest version of XD, you can now double click this to go inside and adjust things like the crop if you want to. Or what you can do is just select the shape with the image as the fill and resize this. And I love this because it doesn't skew the image out of proportion. So I can resize this however I like and it maintains those proportions. So if I want to make this a bit wider or a bit narrower, you can see it's all still usable and doesn't skew that image out of shape. And there we go, we've created our sign up screen and we are done. Well, and there we go. That was how to design a sign up screen all in Adobe XD. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did and you found it helpful, please do let me know down below along with any questions or comments. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.